In this lesson, we're going to address dimensioning issues with respect to the drawings. I've loaded a drawing here which has three layers on it. We have the white layer, which is the default layer, the red layer, and the yellow layer. If we zoom in on it, take a close look, we can see that there's a dimension here in the yellow layer, and the red layer has dot dash lines. And these are called centering lines on a drawing. They'll be used for the XY coordinate dimensions. So we zoom back out. Notice one thing we've noticed here. There is a dimension in here, 3.5 inches. When we go back to the, look at the whole drawing, if we place this whole drawing on a page, on a piece of paper, you wouldn't be able to read the dimensions because they're the wrong size. So we're going to fix that. So first of all, we're going to make the coordinate dimensions invisible so they don't get in our way until we need them. Let's go up here and take a look at the drawing preferences and dimension settings right here. And they talk about the text height. Well, obviously our text height is wrong. Eighth of an inch is pretty small. So let's go ahead and make the text height a half inch, 0.5 inches. We'll apply that. I can quit hitting that darn thing. And we say OK. So now you notice you can't actually read the text. And if you zoom in in a reasonable zoom scale, you can see that everything's crystal clear. So we're going to use that for, it, for this particular drawing, the text height of 0.5 inches. So let's go back to where we were. All right, the dimensioning tools are over here, and it's this icon right here, Dimension and Tools. Left-click it, and we'll do the first tool here, Aligned Dimension. Aligned Dimension simply means that the dimension is going to be lined up with whatever your two points are referencing. So let's go ahead and select Ends of Lines, and we're going to make this our first extension line origin. And this will be our second extension line origin. And now we have to freehand to move this thing or wherever we want it. See, so we can put the dimension offset from the part being measured. So we'll put it right there. So now we've finished placing that dimension. Let's take a moment and examine this dimension in close detail. So I'm going to zoom in right here. We can see all the parts of the dimension. Notice there's a gap right up here between the part being measured and the dimensioning line. So let's go take a look at what what that's called so we can change it. So we're going to here drawing preferences, go to dimension settings, and it's one of these three things. So the question is which one? We're going to remove keep proportions. So the dimension line gap, I know that that particular item is the distance between the text and the dimension line. So let's go ahead and backspace, change that to uh, 0.5 and apply it. Say OK. Now notice the text right here. It's 0.5. It's half of a division. There's a grid dot, grid dot. It's 0.5 inches above the line. If we go back Drawing preferences again. And we set it back to default and go look at it again. And you notice now it's it's an eighth of an inch above the line. So now we know for certain that dimension line gap is the the text distance from the dimension line. Next thing we have to figure out is the extension line extension and extension line offset. So I'm pretty sure the extension line offset is the distance between the object being measured and the and the mark that points that reference. So let's make that 0.5 inches. And say OK. And notice this distance right here. That's a dimension line offset. Right now, it's a half an inch. We go back and set it back. 
drawing preferences, keep proportions. Notice now it's something less, it's eighth of an inch, I believe. So that's what that particular item is. Extension line offset is an eighth of an inch by default if we have a half inch text height. And that's what that's called. The next item, extension line extension. Let's take a look at that. We're going to change that to, to one inch. Say OK. And notice now it goes one inch past the arrowhead. So that, that has to do with how far this goes past the arrowhead. So let's go back again. And we go back to proportions. Notice proportion is a quarter of an inch. Now it's a quarter of an inch. So now we understand what the different parts of this dimension line consist of. We have the text. We have the text offset. From the dimension line itself, we have arrowheads, and we have this thing with a gap right here, and how far it goes past the arrowhead. So those are all the features of a dimension. So right now we have this drawing set up so that you can actually see the dimensions realistically when you're viewing the entire drawing. Notice that we successfully placed our dimension, but it's on the wrong layer. It's on the primary layer. I want it on the linear dimensions layer. So let's go ahead and delete that and do it again. So we hit the delete key. We select the linear dimensions layer. Select dimensioning tool. Select this guy. Snap to the ends of the lines. And we're going to start our first extension origin. Second point. And then we'll freehand put the thing down here. Now we have our dimension on the dimensions layer where I wanted it. We're finished placing that dimension. Next, we want to use this dimensioning tool called Rotated Linear. And what it does here, it adds an angle up here. In other words, the, the dimension line will be at a specific angle. In this case, it's 90 degrees, which would be straight up. So we'll use the Auto Snap. We'll come down here, and we're going to measure the height of this triangle right here. So we're going to intersect. We're going to snap this intersection for the first extension line origin. Then we're going to snap this intersection for the second extension line origin. Then we're going to go to freehand and set the dimension wherever we want it and put it right there. So notice how now that the dimension is from the peak to the bottom, so you don't want the dimension running along this line. It would be very confusing to someone trying to read this. So the purpose of this tool is to give us that angle dimension. We can fix it at any angle we want to. And the dimension line will be at that angle. Next tool we have here is the horizontal dimensioning tool, which is pretty obvious. We'll select that. And it's time to discuss these items up here. Place a new dimension in this circle. We're going to use a diametric tool. When we do that, it says choose arc or entity. We're going to use a center circle. Notice now it says place the so the dimension line location. We're going to go up here and make some changes first. We're going to set the diameter symbol in front of the dimension. This is standard CAD practice. These are other symbols that are commonly used in CAD programs. So now we've got the diameter symbol in front of the dimension. And we're going to put some words after dimension. So if we use the, these two symbols, that will retain the dimension. The dimension will be go and place those two symbols. And then what we can do, we can add some text afterwards. Say inside. So now, when we come down here and place our dimension, we finish placing that item. And now, if we go look at it up close, you see the fact we do have the the prefix symbol. We got the actual dimension itself, and we got the text that followed the dimension. You could have also put the text between the prefix and the dimension. You could have text on both sides of the dimension, as long as you use those, those two bracket signs, that 
greater than and less than symbol, then you can modify things on both sides of the dimension itself. So that concludes that little discussion on how to add text to a dimension on a dimensioning entity. So now we'll go back to where we were. We're replacing a horizontal dimension and auto snap. We're going to mention the length of this rectangle. So the first extension lines right there. Second extension lines right there. And you can offset to grid steps if you want to, or you can freehand to get more specific where you want to place it. So now we place that dimension. The next tool we use is the vertical dimensioning tool, which is pretty much obvious. Auto snap, we're going to dimension from here down to here. And we'll offset it one grid unit. So now we placed a vertical dimension. Use that tool. One last tool here we want to use is this radial dimension. And once again, let's choose an arc or a circle. So we'll choose this outer circle here. Now it says dimension, line, or location. Notice we can we can put this thing wherever we want it. So let's put it right here. And now we have placed a radio dimension. There's not enough room to put it inside a circle, but we'll put it outside the circle automatically. But I haven't found a way to force it to go outside the circle. And last but not least, we'll go down here and measure this angular dimension. It says arc or first of two lines. So let's, let's select this line second line would be this one. Now it says dimension of location. Notice we can make it bigger, smaller, whatever we want to. And we'll place it right there. So that's how we use that tool. Next we're going to use the uh, ordinate tool right here. And to do that I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to add a layer. We'll call it the ordinate layer. Ordinate dimensions. O-R-D-I-N-A-T-E Ordinate dimensions, we're going to set it as color green. And the line type, we're going to use as dash dot small. Say OK. Now we have the layer selected. So the first thing I want to do, I want to, I want to draw the ordinate coordinates of this circle up here, small circle. So let's go ahead and zoom in so we can work easier. First thing I want to do is put our relative reference point in the center of that circle. So I'm going to do a snap function, set relative zero. I'm going to snap it to the center. That will be the center of the circle. Then I'm going to lock the thing so it can't move. I'm going to lock the relative zero. Now I'm going to draw some um, centering lines. Draw lines, two-point line. Auto mode. I'm going to restrict it vertically. I'm going to put it from right here down to here. Right click escape. Now I'm going to restrict it horizontally. Go from here to here. And escape. Now I have so many lines on that circle. What I'm going to do now is place the dimensions of these centering lines. So I'm going to go over here. Select the dimensioning tool and the ordinate tool. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to find the end of this line. I'm still in the auto snap mode. I'm going to go to the end of this line right here. It says feature location. So I'm, I've located the feature. Notice it's giving me, well, you don't know, but if I come out to the left, it gives me, if I go like that, it gives me the X coordinate of that line. If I come down here, find the end of this one, come out in this direction and I get the Y coordinate of that line. So I place it. Now we're going to go ahead and zoom back out for a second and zoom in different so we can see all the numbers here. Next I'm going to go to the uh, measurement tool. I'm going to select the XY coordinates 
I'm going to snap to the center of the circle. And if you notice, the number 19.4222 is 1 foot, which is 12 inches plus 7 inches, 19.4222 for the x-coordinate. The y-coordinate is 2 feet, which is 24 and 6 is 30 inches. So it says right here, it says 30 inches, 0.4314. So we have, in fact, properly labeled these centering lines for this circle. And that's how you use the ordinate tool. Once again, you want to unlock that silly locked relative reference because it'll get you later if you don't do it. So now it's unlocked. We'll go back to our dimensioning tools. And there's one more tool here. It's called the leader. So let's put a leader down here on this. The circle. So select the entity. We're going to select this circle right here. We're going to select the leader tool. We'll reference right there. And we'll bring it over here. And then we'll terminate. What that gave, that gave us an arrow that points to something. Now we can take our text editing tool and edit any text and place the text next to it. So that's how you use a leader tool to point to an object that you want to have text describe. I won't go into how the text tool is used because that's a separate lesson. We'll get to that when it's the proper time. Last but not least, we're going to look at the format of the dimensioning text. We come down here, Drawing Preferences, Dimension Setting, the Arrow or an Architectural Tick, which is a sliced, sliced line instead of a straight vertical line. So you can choose between those. But what we're concerned right now is the label format. You can set it to architectural, which would then do sixteenths of an inch instead of decimal points. And there's several other decimals. You can just do straight decimal. You can do scientific notation. So there's all these different formats. Once you choose your format, we'll go back to engineering, then you get to select your precision. What kind of precision do you want with this? We'll leave it at the default. If you do the architectural, Precision has to do with the smallest fraction, 1 32nd, 1 64th. So that's how that would be handled. We'll go back to engineering default. And you can show the trailing zeros or chop them off, whichever is your preference. Angry degrees, same thing, angry degrees. We can show in radians, degrees, minutes, seconds, surveyor units, which is kind of cute. We'll put it back to. Uh, decimal degrees. And then once again, the precision for all these things, you can pick your precision level that you want. And you can show trailing zeros or not. So that's how you change the label format for your dimensioning tool usage. So hopefully this will keep everything straight and you can modify it any way you want to. So this concludes the lesson on using the dimensioning tools. Dimensioning tools are a little bit difficult to use because they, they incorporate lots of knowledge you need under QCAD to make them work properly. But having gotten this far, you should be in good shape.